this video I'm going to show you how to use some of the other filters associated with the MBN Atlas tool. First of all I'm going to do a search on Bombus and I'm going to select the um, tree bumblebee Bombus Hypnorum here and just create a vanilla flavour web map service map from that. Okay and the first uh, additional filter I'm going to put on this um, is a data set filter. So if I go to this data set uh, tab down here on filters and um, here let's look at this uh, Bumblebee Conservation Trust. If I click on the Bumblebee Conservation Trust any data sets associated with that data provider are listed underneath. In this case there's only one but we're going to restrict um, the records to just those supplied by the Bumblebee Conservation Trust, in other words the Bee Wolf records here. I'm going to change the colour so you can see the difference. Click the map button again. So we've got another um, web map service layer up here now uh, in green, and this one's also marked with provider DP and that, that 99. That's just the code for Bumblebee Conservation Trust. So you can see how it's brought fewer records back, just those associated with that data provider. Okay, let's get um, rid of that green layer go back to the filters and this time I'm going to look at um, another data provider. Let's take off the Bumblebee Conservation Trust. We're going to look at a local record sensor. Uh, my old friends, Merseyside uh, Biobank, we can find them. There we go. And if I click on them, then they've got four um, record sets listed under there. If I just click on Merseyside Biobank, that selects all the record sets. Let's make a map from those zoom into Biobank, obviously it's a geographically restricted data set in terms of the area. So that's, and, and we look at the uh, provider up here, DP111, that's the code for Merseyside Biobank. Okay, let's restrict it further to just some of Merseyside Biobank's um, uh, record sets. So I'm, I'm going to take them, take these ones off actually, and I'm just going to go for the Merseyside Biobank Active Naturalist, which is that one and that one and I'm going to map those. So now rather than getting back all the records from that data provider, we're getting back just the records in those uh, two data sets. Here's the layer up here, you can see it says data sets several. Now if I'd only selected one data set I'd have the code up there for it, but I've got two here so this is marked as several. So you can have as many um, data set filters or data provider filters on a single search as you like, uh, that, that's up to you. I'm going to take all those off now and we're going to look at a different filter. We're going to look at these date filters. First let's clear the data set filters and go to dates up here. And the first thing I'm going to do is restrict these records. I just want to see all those from 2011 or before. And to do that I use this filter here to filter out all records after 2011. So I both have to set the uh, year of interest here and then check this box, filter out records after end year. So it's going to remove everything from 2012 onwards. Uh, make the map. Let's just zoom to the UK extent again. Uh, there we go. So you can see we've got a restricted range there. Um, I will do a further filter now and this time I'm just going to get a data range and I'm interested in the records between say 2012 and 2013 just those two years so this time I set the filters like that so this is going to remove all the records before 2012 this is going to remove all the records after 2013 let's change the color here say blue move that on top so you can see it so there we go, there's the, the records within that range there. And you can see that the labels uh, of the layers up here uh, reflect to some extent the filters that you're using. Okay, so that's set in date filters and um, data set filters. Let's now look at a polygon filter. To do that, I'm going to zoom into this uh, little layer here. So this is the extensive Preston Montford Field Centre. It's just a small site with a, sing a simple boundary, and I can use that boundary uh, as, a, as a geographic filter on our uh, records. So you can see I've got records outside and inside here. If I first highlight the layer that I'm 
want to select the filter from in the layer uh, panel then actually pick the feature itself that I want to use you can see now when I do that this little checkbox under polygon up here becomes uh, visible this specified filters tell me all the filters that I've got on at the moment and you can see immediately I've actually forgotten to remove the date filters so it's always worth checking this first so I need to go back to filters dates and uncheck these two boxes if I go back here now you'll see that those have gone. So the only two filters I've got on are species, Bombus Ignorum, and this polygon. Watch what happens to this um, filter indicator here if I unselect all the features with this button up here. You can see it disappears. And when I select the feature again now, you'll see it come back on. So it's come back on. So I can use that. Click the button here. It's made the layer, but it's put it underneath. Let's put it on top, and you can see that it's just brought back um, the records in this um, WMS call from that layer there, the selected feature from that layer. So that's how we can do a restricted um, search on a polygon. Okay, let's clear that um, selection and therefore that filter. And I'm going to take off this Preston Montford layer. And what I want to demonstrate now is um, using a grid square as in a polygon filter. So I'm just going to create a temporary grid square layer using our OSGB tool here. So there's some 10k grid squares and I'm going to select one of those. So highlight the layer here, pick the layer there and now you can see I've got the polygon filter on. So this time let's bin the last layer. And this time when I use the WMS tool, the layer up top, you'll see that the um, it restricts the search to just that grid square. So it's very easy to use this uh, to, to, to restrict searches to a particular grid reference, for example. Finally, I'm going to use this um, utility on the filters tab down here to do a point and buffer. Let's just give that a bit more room. So I can specify a grid reference in here and I'm going to use SJ433144 and I'm going to specify a buffer of, I'm going to say 5 kilometers. And using this tool here I can actually generate that buffer. Let's clear off the, um, the grid squares underneath. So I've got a now circular buffer around a particular grid reference. Clear the last layer select the circle I've just created and you can see I've got polygon species and so now when I do the map WMS button it's just going to bring back the layers that uh, uh, sorry the records that overlap um, that specified filter so you use exactly the same methods to specify filters for downloads as well okay it's the, it's the same method so when you're downloading records which we'll cover in a later video you can use these same filters to restrict your the records that you bring back